So we're going to do a little bit of body painting. I have a couple of brushes, I have some water, some split cakes, some water activated paints. Uh, yeah, let's go for it. So before we kind of start, we really need to activate our paints. Now the one that needs to be activated the most is white. If you don't spend a good amount of time activating your paint, then you're just not going to get the right consistency, you're not going to get the right fluidity from it, and you're just not going to get as much contrast as you want. So spending that time and working your brush or sponge into the paint has so many benefits that you'll just learn to love. So once I'm happy with the consistency, I'm going to try it on the skin, creating some swirly patterns, and you'll see that it's quite a nice strong white, rather than a dead watery one. Black, on the other hand, doesn't need to be quite as intensely kind of manipulated to get the strong payoff, as it's obviously quite dense and dark by itself. Um, so yeah, I'm just applying a little bit. I'm not wetting the whole product. I'm just using a small brush and I'm just denting in the middle. I'm just going to show you that I can use the black and get a nice kind of strong outline there as well. Now, very quickly, again, I'm using a brush and I'm really activating the light blue in the Meron palette and um, building it up and kind of really breaking into the paint, build up a nice kind of consistency. I'm going to use a brush here and just show you how simple and easy it is just to apply the paint onto the skin and create a nice base. So using a large brush, that's a flat brush there, um, I can literally just stroke that on. Because I've built the paint up, it's not too wet and watery, I'm getting a really nice base, good coverage, um, and I'll be able to really quickly bond that over the skin. Another way to create a base really, really easily is to use a sponge. So I'm spraying my paint there with a little bit of water um, and I'm just building up the right consistency on my sponge. I don't want it too wet, don't want it too dry. Every paint is different, so you kind of need to play about with them and see how you feel and how they feel in the skin, how much water they need um, and how strong the colour is. So once I'm quite happy with that, um, yeah, I'm just blending it on. There you can see as an example I've put too much water in, so it's a bit watery and it's a bit of a washout to be fair, isn't it? That would just run and leak and it would not look very good. So what we're going to do here, um, obviously we can apply the base colour all over, but I want to concentrate here on blending colours. Now I've missed a bit of the recording there. So what I've done is I've blended the pink into a dark blue purple, and then I've blended that into a nice blue, and now I'm going to concentrate using the Meron palette that we've got at home, um, and I'm going to blend in the kind of cyan, light, tealy kind of greeny colour there and blending that back and forth. So I'm using two different sponges. I'm going back in when the paints are still wet and just smooching them together. It takes a wee bit of time, but once you get there, you get a lovely kind of payoff. So next up, I'm just going to use the green in the palette and blend the, blend the kind of jady colour into the green. Again, going back in with the lighter turquoise colour and blending the green into that. And from the green, I'm now going to add a little bit of yellow. We want to see that our colours are kind of smoothing in a transition. So again, the yellow just blending it into the green, going back in with the yellow sponge and making sure I get a nice kind of even blend. This is ideal if you're doing like a space scene or something like that. And it's very messy though. So it's important to remember that when we are blending our colours that we kind of want to use colours that go round the wheel. So kind of colours that are next to each other. If we go for complementary colours, they're going to kind of contrast and neutralise. So you get a kind of yucky kind of brownie grey colour almost in between, which is not a nice kind of tone to blend. So once our blend is dry, and um, completely dry, then we can kind of paint on top of it if we wanted to. I just decided to do a couple of stars here. You can kind of do what you want. So this is a split cake, and these are bought split cakes, so you can make your own ones up if you want to. This one is rainbow themed, um, my kids love it. So I'm using a sponge and I'm just going to dab it onto the skin as we did before, but you'll see because of the different colours in there we get a nice rainbow effect. Very simple, very beautiful to see on the skin, and very easy to use. The most intricate part of body painting and face painting would be your line work. Line work takes a bit of practice, so you'll see over the next couple of wee films, I'm just practicing my lines. What I'm trying to do here is to kind of create different pressures with my brush. So I'm starting off quite light, I'm applying a little bit more pressure and then kind of trailing off at the end so I get a different kind of balance to my lines. 
So starting thin, going thick, thin and thick. Creating different kind of shapes as we go. So this is kind of like how you would create your kind of zebra stripes, your tiger stripes. So if you've not done any body painting or line work for a while, take some time out and just practice your line work. You'll be amazed at what different kind of styles and shapes you can make. So straight line work is really important as well. Um, so yeah, have a wee shot of practicing straight lines on the skin. You can see that I'm also holding my brush as I would hold a pencil. That gives me really good control. Another type is your kind of teardrop. So that's using a larger brush and kind of applying pressure and then lightly lifting it off at the bottom so you get more of a tail. So these are ideal for like the clean kind of shell looks and crowns on face painting, but ideal for body painting as well. You can also bring the curve in like I'm doing there. It's always quite handy if you have a dot and that's your focal point so you can bring it in. Swirls are always good to know. You can create them in different sizes and shapes. So all these kind of brushwork lines that I'm doing here, I am using the round brush. Now when you are practicing new swirls, try and practice them in another direction because you'll have a go-to, another one will be slightly harder. So stars are always something that everybody wants to know how to do and they're so simple. You need to use quite a fine brush um, and dipping it in white. All the stars are kind of white, aren't they? Uh, sometimes you can put a little kind of spot in the middle if you want to. Um, and then just drag your brushes almost in the teardrop so you're applying a little bit more pressure and you're lifting the brush as you go so you get a nice tail. You can add little extra double stars in there as well. Find that in smaller lines in between your bigger lines. Another thing the round brush is great for is to make flower petals. So I'm going to show you how to do that using two colours. Um, I've got the Meron palette and I'm using your light kind of sky blue. Really coating the brush, working the paint in as always. Then I'm going to dust off the tip um, of the brush and I'm going to apply a little bit of purple. I'm just going to apply the purple to the tip of the brush. Um, you'll see it and I'll show you in a second. Enough so that you can see the colour, but not so much that it's kind of blending up. To really working it in there as well. You want to have equal amounts. You kind of want your paint to last you to do a couple of petals. Now flower petals look really intricate but they're actually quite easy. So you need to have your brush at a 90 degree angle onto the skin. You can see I'm holding it straight above my arm and then I'm just lying it down. So the purple colour at the bottom is intense and that stays in the middle and your lighter colour will blend up as we place it. You can use any colours for these, you can have pinks and purples, I'm just using the colours in the palette so you can play about with them. I love a flower that's kind of got the white to the pink and the purple, I think that's always beautiful. So if you have a white, give a go with that. You can always add a little green leaf with your teardrop. Went a bit OTT with the green here. And then if you wanted to, you could add an extra little inner flower. So again, I've just got the kind of darker pink and the purple, making it pop like a bit more 3D. And here we go.